So when it comes to generating energy on Earth, there are several resources that we can use. The first one that we're going to look at is fossil fuels. So this is one that I'm sure you've come across before. So fossil fuels are anything like coal, oil or gas. And the way they work is you dig them up from the ground and then they can be used to power fossil fuel power stations uh, where they used to heat up things like water to steam. It can then turn turbines. And the problem with the fossil fuels are they are finite resources and they're what we call non-renewable. So non-renewable being resources that will eventually run out. They're not being replenished as they're being used. It takes a really long time for fossil fuels to regenerate. So once we run out, then we have run out and they won't come back uh, in any good length of time. So we don't call them renewable. The next resource that we can look at is nuclear fuel. So nuclear fuel works by using radioactive substances or nuclear substances in nuclear power stations. And what they can do is be used as an alternative form of fuel. But the problem with nuclear fuel is it does the very dangerous very radioactive nuclear waste which needs to be disposed of it's quite difficult to be disposed of and it can be quite dangerous if you have an accident if there is an accident it can cause fallout for miles and miles around and can make the surrounding area very dangerous to live in a very famous example being the Chernobyl power station. The next one we can look at is biofuel. The so biofuel is when we specifically grow crops to be then fermented and the product we get from that fermentation can then be used as a fuel and the problem with biofuels is that instead of using farmland, which can be quite valuable to grow food that we can eat, we're instead using up that farmland, taking that land away from that potential use to actually make crops just to ferment them to make biofuel. The next one we can look at is wind. So wind is generally quite good. It's what we'd call a renewable resource. So both of these actually are renewable resources, wind and biofuel. We can make more of them very easily and we can replenish them as we use them and so the biofuel we can grow more with wind we're not going to run out of wind it's always windy right uh, but the problem with wind is generally you need to create these large wind turbines which can be quite an eyesore can cause visual pollution you might also have to destroy habitats to build these wind turbines and also it's not always windy so it can be quite unreliable at times so if you're trying to build power or electricity infrastructure then wind turbines might be quite unreliable and you might have periods without any electricity or power at all the next one we want to look at is hydroelectric so i'll just put it down here and so hydroelectric again is an example of a renewable power source and the way hydroelectric power works is you create a large dam to form an almost artificial lake and then essentially you use the power of that water if you let that water flow it can power these turbines that are built into your dam and that can essentially generate power or electricity so hydroelectricity is great because it's renewable um, it doesn't have any harmful fossil fuels sorry it doesn't have any harmful gases emitted it is just using water but it is quite expensive to build it does use a large amount of land and the idea is that it can destroy wildlife and habitats because you're building up this artificial lake you're putting a dam which wasn't there before and you're also destroying lots of potential land and habitats to build that dam in the first place the next one is geothermal so geothermal is when you use the thermal activity of the inside of the earth to actually generate power so often within certain parts of the earth underground there's hot springs or steam which can be used to generate power now this is again an example of a renewable energy because it's not going to run out and we're not using up faster than it's being replaced and it is good in that respect but again it can be quite unreliable because not all places on earth have access to geothermal energy it's only in certain areas of the world you have the that geothermal power being generated the next one we can look at is the tides or tidal energy and tidal energy works as essentially we have water moving in and out of seaside coasts and rivers and estuaries all the time and if we can harness that that water being moved then we can use that to generate electricity so once again this is a form of renewable energy uh, but the problem is that it's quite expensive and quite difficult to build uh, tidal energy resources because it requires building large very expensive barriers to actually control the the water and generate that electric electricity from the water so it's quite difficult to do and quite expensive to do and the last one that we're going to look at is actually solar energy which we'll do down here the solar energy is energy from the sun so again it's a renewable resource because we can always create more energy the sun rises every day the idea is that solar energy is a great example of clean energy resource but the problem is again it's unreliable so much like the wind energy it might not always be sunny depending on the weather you might not be able to generate much electricity and so you might have periods we don't have any energy and in that respect it's not so stable.
And so we talked a little bit about the environmental impact of using these various energy resources. One thing that we didn't go into too much detail was fossil fuels. So fossil fuels can lead to a range of quite damaging environmental impacts. The first one is it can lead to global warming. So fossil fuels release things called greenhouse gases. So things like CO2 is what we call a greenhouse gas. And these greenhouse gases contribute to global warming because they prevent essentially heat from the sun escaping out of our atmosphere, which essentially warms up our earth. It can also cause acid rain. So that's another one that you can put right down here. Acid rain. And the way that this happens is in certain fossil fuels, you have impurities such as sulfur. When the fossil fuels are burnt, that sulfur then goes into the atmosphere, it reacts with the water in our atmosphere or in our clouds. And you can end up producing acid rain, which is sulfuric acid, essentially. And that can cause damage to structures or buildings or statues and it can also kill plants okay so that's from sulfur dioxide that's produced when you burn the sulfur uh, sulfur impurities in certain fossil fuels and so i guess the question comes what do we actually need this energy for so we have various uses for all of this energy and what we can say is that one of the uses is transport so if you think about actually uh, motor fuel so fuel for your cars and things like that cars trains buses all of this stuff needs fuel to run off of and so they could they could use various different types of these resources to produce that fuel the next uh, resource or the next use that we'd have for these resources is heating so if you think about it we need to heat all of our homes we need to heat all of our buildings and so we need a fuel to burn or something that will produce heat to actually generate the heat that we need to keep ourselves warm and the last one and then probably the most common one is to generate electricity so to power all of our electrical devices and things like that we do need electricity and so we need one of these resources to generate that electricity for us and so one thing we can talk about generally is this pattern of the use of these energy resources previously we have pretty much been heavily reliant as a human race on fossil fuels and now we are slowly moving towards more renewable resources such as tidal geothermal wind and biofuel and that is mainly due to the effects that scientists have observed from the use of fossil fuels so things like global warming and acid rain and also the fact that fossil fuels are non-renewable and they are running out so we do need to shift away from fossil fuels and more and more we are have put in place targets to cut down our carbon emissions and part of that is then not using these fossil fuels and moving towards these renewable resources such as geothermal or wind building wind farms and things like that and also the use of nuclear power stations where appropriate to have a fuel source that doesn't produce these harmful gases such as these greenhouse gases that we mentioned one last thing that we can mention before we finish this topic off is the idea of trends of electricity usage and so what you might notice is if you were to take a graph of ele electricity demand against time then it wouldn't just be a smooth demand the whole time what you notice in a day you'd have several peaks and troughs and peaks and troughs and what you might notice is that for example in the morning when everybody wakes up there's a peak for electricity demand because everyone's switching on their kettle or switching on their toaster or having a shower so everyone wants energy at that stage when they wake up in the morning and then what you might notice is in the afternoon everyone comes back from work you also get a similar peak where everyone again is cooking their dinner trying to put the kettle on to drink tea and things like that and so what we need to build into our energy resource system is uh, or our national grid is this ability to meet these peaks of demand and uh, very very specific times and one way to do that is by using stores of energy or stores of electricity to actually uh, meet these high peaks of demand okay so that's it for this video and uh, i'll see you in the next one okay so quick quiz time then feel free to pause the video to have a go question one where does acid rain come from well, acid rain is often sulfuric acid specifically and so it comes from impurities in fossil fuels okay so the key thing is when you burn fossil fuels you might end up producing sulfuric acid as a byproduct so that should say sulfuric acid okay the next part question two what are the drawbacks of tidal energy well the key drawback for tidal energy it you need expensive barrages and so it costs quite a lot of money to build a tidal energy infrastructure the next thing is uh, name one pro and con of wind energy so one pro you can say it's a renewable energy resource you can also say that it doesn't produce any harmful gases or contribute to global warming uh, but one con you could say it is can be unreliable because obviously you are relying on the wind to be blowing 
and if you have a not very windy day you're not going to generate very much electricity okay so hopefully that will make sense and i'll see you in the next one